Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking money, specifically how to be smart with money and still shop luxury. And I'm going to give you seven practical tips. Since my channel is largely about luxury and fashion, I do get from time to time questions about how I personally manage my finances. So I wanted to share my personal tips. So by no means, I mean this video to come across preachy or like a lecture. It is just that maybe for some of you, my tips could be helpful. And I think there's a real stigma around people who buy designer bags and shoes and things that were really bad with our money. But I think for a lot of us, quite the opposite is the true. We have to be pretty disciplined with our finances to be able to afford these things. If I suppose you're doing it the responsible way, which I'm sure a lot of us are these days. We're not going into buying these expensive designer items blinded. So without further ado, let's get into my tip number one. So let's get a couple of obvious but boring points out of the way because these are still very important. So my first tip is to prioritize your spending and know when to save or splurge. Just buying cheap things isn't always the answer. There are specific things that I think you should spend a little bit of extra money on so you can get the longevity out of the items, but I don't believe that you need to spend a lot of money on every single item in your life. So since we usually talk about fashion and wardrobe items, let's just take that as an example. I believe that not every single item in your closet needs to be a designer label or from a very high-end brand. You can always mix and match the more affordable but luxurious looking items and pair them with a couple of statement pieces, maybe from a designer brand that might cost you a little bit more to achieve that effortless and chic but elegant look. Taking myself as an example, I do generally focus on delegating more of my funds towards buying designer handbags and shoes because I do believe that I do get the best cost per wear out of those types of items. Whereas when it comes to my clothing, I do own a couple of designer clothing pieces, but most of my clothing pieces are from the more affordable but good quality brands. But I also try to avoid fast fashion, so I don't go really, really cheap either because the quality isn't there. So I do like to go that sort of mid-range range, but focus on finding quality brands that still have reasonable price points. Silk clothing pieces are great examples of these. It is one of my all-time favorite materials because you get that luxurious touch and feel and look, but at the same time, you can often find really reasonably priced pieces like this silk top I'm wearing, which is from Lily Silk, who is the video sponsor for this segment of today's video. So as it is pretty obvious from their name, Lily Silk specializes in high quality silk pieces and they do a range of items including clothing items such as silk tops, skirts, dresses and they also do amazing bedding, pillowcases and they even do pajamas, bras and underwear. Lily Silk does really amazing luxurious pieces at such reasonable price points. I mean look at the shirt that I'm wearing today. I absolutely love the subtle sheen. It just looks so elegant and the buttons are so beautiful on this particular piece as well. I mean look at that attention to detail and a lot of their silk shirts are just around a hundred US dollars or so and they look a lot more luxurious than the amount of money that you pay for them. There are so many known benefits to silk to the human body. Also I've only been using silk pillowcases in the last three or four years so even before I started using Lily Silk pillowcases I was already using silk pillowcases but what I love about the Lily Silk one is that it's got a really beautiful sheen and their silk pillowcases are so affordable and they offer a range of really beautiful colors. I love Love this slate color. It's a very expensive looking neutral color and you can even score a better deal. I do have a discount code to share with you guys. So to save 15%, you can use the code Isabel15, which will make the prices of these items even more amazing. Anyway, I'm sure a lot of you are already familiar with the benefits of silk to our body, but just to name a few, it is so gentle on your skin. It is hypoallergenic, antibacterial. It is really breathable and it does an amazing amazing job at insulating. So in the summer, silk material on your body keeps you cool, but in the winter, it keeps the heat in, which is why it is an amazing material all season around. And especially when it comes to pillowcases and your bedding sets, silk is really amazing for that reason, because not only it is a really good 
temperature regulator. It doesn't absorb away a lot of your skincare products during the night. So more of it can stay on your skin doing whatever it needs to do. And also is really good for your hair as well because your hair is able to freely move past the really smooth surface of silk. And it is anti-aging and prevents wrinkles. Doesn't cause wrinkles on your face when you sleep on a silk pillowcase because there's pretty minimal friction on such a smooth surface. I also think that these make for really nice gifts that don't cost too much. Like I mentioned, this pillowcase is only $27 before the 15% discount with my discount code. And without spending a lot, you're still gifting someone something really luxurious. And speaking of gifts, they come beautifully packaged in these beautiful boxes. So the silk pillowcase came in this beautiful box and the shirts come in these bigger boxes. So if you're looking for a gift for someone, Lily Silk items are so great. And let me just share one more thing. I tried their seamless silk bras. Oh my goodness, they are wireless, they're so comfortable, and they still have the removable padding so that, you know, if you're small chested like me, still gives you a little bit of a push up. They keep everything so tidy, your skin doesn't bulge out of the bra lines, and because they're wireless, they're just so comfortable. So, yes, if you're looking for a comfortable bra style, I definitely recommend that you check out the Lily Silk ones. I'm wearing one at the moment just under this shirt, and it's so seamless. You can't even see any of the lines so they're perfect to go under those more body hugging dresses and shirts so i'm gonna leave a link to lily silk website in the description section below and direct links to all the items that i shown you in this video so if you haven't checked out lily silk already make sure you have a look don't forget to use my discount code for even a better deal and thank you lily silk for sponsoring this part of the video moving on to point number two is to budget and delegate your money into different baskets or different accounts I know this is another boring and obvious point, but I just wanted to share what I do because a lot of you actually ask me how I delegate my income. And I literally have six different online accounts all under the one profile, but I just find it a lot easier to manage my finances when my money is actually in visually different accounts. It makes it so much easier for me to never overspend because there's only one account that is delegated for all things that are fun so you know all of the extra niceties of life i'm only allowed to spend from that one pot of money so my very first account is the everyday account and that's the money that i need for pretty much my necessities like food recurring bills you know all of those everyday spending my second account is called the sinking fund so i do always have a couple of thousand dollars in there and that is for those infrequent bills that i might forget about like your yearly car insurance i also have professional indemnity insurance you know all of those bills that don't happen every month but those bills that come say every quarter every six months or you know annually so that i always have a a little bit of money saved up there so when these bills come even if i forget exactly when they're due i always have enough money to pay those infrequent bills my third account is a rainy day account or you can even call it the just in case account and this is pretty much my emergency funds so if my car broke down and the repair cost a few thousand dollars you know those big bills that life might throw at you that i don't have to reach for a credit card or get into debt over an accident just in case something happens i know that i've got some money saved up. My fourth account is a longer savings goal account. So this is for those sort of larger sums of money that I'm saving for, for a financial goal, such as saving for a deposit for an investment property or even a house. Or if you want to start a business and you want to have a little bit of money saved up so you can try say an online business, that sort of a thing. I mean, for me, starting this YouTube channel was one of those things, you know, you do need a lot of equipment and I just didn't want to start with crappy equipment from the beginning so you know I invested in a good camera a good microphone some lighting and a good laptop and an editing software all from the beginning so that cost me quite a few thousand dollars so that could be a goal as well and then I have a dedicated investment account which is linked to my share trading account so that is a bit of money that I pay myself first to invest money so that my money can work for me so in the future hopefully you know I can have enough passive income that I don't always have to to rely on my active income by working and finally I have my 
fun account that is where I delegate a little bit of money each time I get paid and in that pool I buy my designer bags I also used to use these funds for traveling not that there's much of that happening I was lucky that I squeezed in like three interstate travel this year it was domestic but it was still amazing um, so yeah these are the six accounts that I have currently under the one profile and when you see me buying designer bags and shoes and whatever it is I usually only spend the money from my fun account and I always make sure that all the other five accounts are taken care of and I've got enough saved up there now of course it's going to take some time for anyone to build enough funds in each of these accounts so if you're just starting out and you don't have much of a savings and you just came out of say uni and you're just getting into the workforce I do have to admit it does take time to build up each of these accounts but even if it takes six months 12 months trust me it is definitely worth knowing that all your other say five accounts are taken care of before you splurge on a Louis Vuitton bag like I said I didn't want this to be a lecture but I have been working for 10 years so for me I've had plenty of time to get my finances sorted I always even had a job when I was at university anyway this will definitely take some time to build up but Every time you buy yourself a designer handbag or shoes or whatever it is out of the fun account after all of your other responsible accounts are taken care of, you're going to treasure that item and enjoy that item so much more and you're going to have zero guilt. My tip number three is to have multiple streams of income and most people can achieve this by having a side hustle or side hustles. I wasn't always good at this. I relied on my one source of income which is the income from my day job for years but a few years ago I came across some financial advice YouTube videos blog posts and also read some books that really opened my eyes into this whole financial world I mean I was pretty young back then when I just used to rely on my one single source of income but in the last couple of years I've really changed my ways and started building myself multiple streams of income and I think this is so important for our generation and the future generations I feel like a lot of people from our parents generation they were okay having one professional job and that income was more than enough for them to you know buy a house and do all of the things that they wanted to do have enough um, retirement savings and all of that but I feel like now more than ever we need to have multiple streams of income because I feel like the job security isn't what it used to be the world is changing so fast your skill might one day become redundant or you know it might just become so competitive that your pay won't be as good in the profession that you chose so I feel like this is so important for us moving forward and luckily we live in the generation of internet so I feel like there are so many side hustles that anyone can take up a lot of people have some skills that they have on the side that is not really related to what they do in their day job and there are so many jobs on Online that you can do without having specific skill sets for example I started this YouTube channel it didn't make any income for the first few months because it takes some time for you to build up your audience but in the last couple of years it's become a solid source of income for me so now I have my day job which is a professional job so it does pay me quite well but also I spend a lot of time on my YouTube channel and my social media and that pays me a pretty good income as well it took a lot of time but it does give me that security that I am not solely relying on my day job and you don't have to start a YouTube channel you can find some freelance work on websites like Upwork, Fiverr I recently actually hired a freelance photo editor to get some of my photos edited it was like $12 per photo and I was so happy with the results and for someone who's really skilled at it it's a pretty nice way to earn a bit of side income other skills include if you know how to edit videos you can be a video editor for even youtubers you know the options are endless and this ties in really nicely with my next point which is to invest in your education or developing your skills so some of these skills are not really that hard to learn I mean if I could learn how to edit videos from scratch and I'm not even a techie person there are so many skills that you can just learn 
pretty easy taking an online course or even you know through YouTube videos how to do things and these skills can give you a side hustle income so I think it is so important to invest in your education and in increasing your skill set because you just don't know when these skills are going to come in handy investing in your education continuously can help further your career or ensure that you're always going to be in demand in your type of job market it could be in the form of formal education like getting a degree or doing a master's if you already have a degree or it could just be an informal education where you take up some casual courses to learn how to do certain things and that can position you a lot better in the job market and it can potentially even pay you more for working less hours so sometimes it does cost a lot of money and time to learn a new skill but I think that it is always so important that we keep continuing to learn something. And all of the extra income that you generate from either having a side hustle or by having a pay rise from a new skill set you've obtained or getting a better paying job, you can use a part of that increase in pay for some luxury things that you might want to purchase. And there is nothing more rewarding than doing it that way. Tip number five is to invest your money so that you don't lose your money to inflation. For the longest time, I just thought saving, saving, saving was the way to be financially smart. And then, like I mentioned before, I came across some audiobooks and some lessons on YouTube on these financial gurus videos. And I never really had the concept of inflation I mean, I did, but I didn't really think about it, I don't think. I'm sure a lot of you financially savvy people out there already know what this means, but if you're at a stage where I was a couple of years ago, inflation just means the cost of things go up every day, every year. A loaf of bread 30 years ago, I'm sure cost like 50 cents, and now we need to pay $5 to buy the same amount of bread. That's just the concept of inflation. Everything goes up in price. So if you just hold on to your same $1, over time, that money can't buy you as many things. So the value of your money essentially goes down every single day if you do nothing with it. So I used to be so vigilant with saving and I thought I was so smart. But when I realized holding onto my cash savings in a bank account that pays like 0.2% interest rate was not gonna do me any favors, in 10 years time, my money in the savings account would be really worth a lot less in terms of the buying power of that money. So it is really important to invest your money so your money can grow with the inflation or at a faster rate than the inflation. And of course, disclaimer, I am just a random person on the internet. I am not a financial advisor by any means and I am just sharing what I do. So I just started purchasing some safer blue chip shares, Australian shares of companies that have been sold for a really long time that I don't see going anywhere. And I also started buying into some index funds, which just gives me exposure to a lot of different top performing companies within Australia. So the idea of investing into shares for me is that, you know, over the next decades to come, at least my money will grow at the rate of inflation or maybe a little bit more as these companies companies continue to do business but the idea is to invest in something so the value of that thing that you buy goes up in value over time rather than just holding on to money so currently I just have my emergency fund and about 12 months of living expenses in case something happens to me so that I could survive without a job for about 12 months in cash but other than that set amount I just use the rest of my money to buy more investments rather than just keeping them in cash savings and the three really basic finance books that I really enjoy enjoyed are Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Your Life or Your Money, and Invested. So if you're a beginner like me, you can read these books and it will be a bit of an eye opener because they definitely were for me. And I generally just listen to audiobooks because I just find them easy to listen to when I'm driving, when I'm commuting to and from work. So that's another great way to get some information into your brain without having to sit there and read a book. The sixth tip is my favorite tip and it is don't be penny wise and pound foolish. I've talked about this before in a video where I talked about how I afford luxury and so many people penny pinch here and there skipping on your $4 coffees but then they overlook the big money savers. So the example that I wanted to give is that I still buy my cappuccino every single day, spend $4 every day, sometimes $8. And I don't really skip on that because I do find great joy in having my cup of coffee every day, which if I saved on these coffees, it could save me about $2,000 a year. And I'm not saying $2,000 is 
not a lot of money, but a lot of people overlook bigger ways to save bigger money with less effort. So for example, last year I renegotiated my mortgage interest rate. So I was paying something like 3.8%. 1% interest, but I was able to negotiate it down to about 2.2% and that is about 0.9% less interest rate that I'm paying and say on a million dollars per year, that is almost $10,000 in savings. And just like that, by making one phone call, you can save $10,000 as opposed to every single day thinking, should I buy my coffee? Should I save my $4 to save less than $3,000? which is more attractive. Also, when it comes to insurances and things, you can always look for a better deal and they can save you hundreds of dollars on the spot rather than you know having to decide on whether to get your coffee every day or not. So this could be a really, really obvious point for some of you, but statistically, a lot of people are so much more sensitive about saving a couple of dollars every day than to look at the bigger ticket items. So that is another way that we can be a little bit more financially savvy so we can use some of our hard earned money on the things that we really Really enjoy. And finally, I implement the 24 hour rule and this really helps me stop impulse purchasing. So I recommend that you always think about a purchase for at least one day. So you don't purchase a few thousand dollar handbag on a whim. And I always just tell myself 24 hours because if I tell myself three days or a week, it just seems so long and unachievable that I'm not even gonna stick to it and I'm just gonna go buy something on an impulse. Whereas if I just tell myself 24 hours, it is just so achievable. So I go, you know what, 24 hours is not even that long. Let me just control myself, be self-disciplined and just think about this purchase for at least 24 hours. And more often than not, what is more important than the duration of time that you're supposed to be thinking about a purchase is the fact that you have a circuit breaker. So once you tell yourself, I'm just gonna give myself 24 hours at least it stops the action of you impulse purchasing and after that you often end up thinking about the purchase for much longer than a day so that when you do end up making the purchase you really have thought about whether you want this item or not and also i always remind myself i don't have to actually own physically everything that i love i will still purchase things that i love that will be functional in my lifestyle but for those items that i might just love the look of i don't necessarily have to buy and own these items i can just look at Instagram photos and admire these other items from afar that is completely fine and that has saved me a lot of money over the years as well. So I also want to know what some of your tips are when it comes to being financially smart and still enjoying luxury in the responsible way because luxury is so much more enjoyable when we do it the responsible way money-wise. So if you have other tips, I'd love to hear from you. So do share them in the comments below. Thank you again to Lily Silk for part sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out Lily Silk through the link I left in the description section below and use my discount code if you do decide to buy something. It is not an affiliate code, so I don't make any income from it, but saving 15% is always a good idea. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and spending some of your precious time with me today. And I can't wait to see you again soon in my next video. Bye guys.